Just a couple of comments. First of all, so did, raise your hand if you just learned something new about the uh, veterans. <laughs> that's pretty amazing, isn't it? It's, that's one of the reasons why, why you know, we, we asked Patty to, to do these presentations is very, very few. I've never met a lawyer who knows this much about the veterans benefit, right? Um, so a couple of things as they apply to Frank and Mary. So if you're Frank and Mary and you want to go to Windermere and it's, Seven thousand dollars a month, right? But you've got thirty-five hundred dollars a month in income, right? Um, you've got a lot of assets, but remember, uh, your house doesn't count, right? Uh, the other assets, the IRA, the annuity, the bank accounts, they count. But as Patty had mentioned, as of now, there is if you if Frank and Mary were to shift those assets out of their name and then apply, there is no look back period for the veterans benefit. As she will point out to you, there is legislation that has been suggested by some of our Republican friends to cause that look back period to occur. I would just suggest to you that that's been there, but it's been sitting around for quite a while now, right? I think that Congress, you know, if they ever act on anything, would, 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 would may have trouble changing this specifically because we're talking about veterans, right? And as of now, there is no look back period regarding any of those funds. In addition, even if, and, and Patty referred to the fact that this has been abused now by, by, uh, by some annuity folks <coughs> or annuity salesmen, uh, if there were a look back and if Frank and Mary were saying to themselves, well, but I still really want to go, you know, I really like to go to, to Windermere and I know that I'm earning $3,500 a, you know, a month. If their cost is $6,000 a month, the veteran's benefit will pay $2,000 a month, right, if Frank's a veteran because he's a veteran and he's married, which means now the gap is only $500, right? Well, maybe I can buy, take some of this cash that might be putting me over. Although, as Patty pointed out, you want to be really talking to somebody on an individual basis because she's had clients that have had as much as a quarter of a million dollars in cash, which is not much less than what Frank and Mary have, and they've qualified. But you could take some of this money and use it to buy an annuity that would pay $500 a month the remaining gap that is needed by Frank and Mary in order to be able to pay to be in the assisted living facility, right? Or finally, uh, Frank and Mary need to hold on to their house it, it, unless they want to, you know, turn it into cash and, and then transfer it out. But if they're holding on to their house, they could just go to the bank and get themselves a line of credit loan and know that if they are feeling poor because the quarter of a million that they've kept you know, is not enough to be comfortable and because they're having to pay, well, what, $500 a month? You know, well, $500 a month times 12 is 6000 which means their savings are only shrinking in this example by $6,000 a year. So they could be there for a long time, right, on, in this situation. But if they're worried about that, they could always get a line of credit loan, not pull anything <coughs> off of the line of credit loan, but know that it's there. So if there's an emergency, they can always get the money. Right? So they have a lot of options. Just a couple of other things to note. First of all, as Patty had mentioned, a couple of things that are just really important. Now, everything she says is, not, not everything is really important, but a lot of things are. First though, I want to give you two, I want to go back to two examples that she didn't give, but in the course of her presentations in the past, I've heard her give them. Because people are concerned about, oh, you know, I'd never qualify because I don't meet these activities of daily living. And we've often talked about activities of daily living here in, in other contexts, in the, in the mass health context. And remember, they are uh, getting up out of the chair, getting across the room, uh, bathing, dressing, eating, uh, toileting. And making sure that you can figure out, making, making sure you can figure out your meds. Medication and transportation. And medication management, yeah. So, but two of the examples that Patty often gives is, well, you know, if suppose you uh, need help with your shower. But, you know, oh, one thing that she always mentions is, um, 
activities of daily living aren't necessarily activities that occur daily. Now, who would have thunk it, right? So if, you, so if you're taking a shower, but you're like taking, you know, you're not feeling that great, and so you only take a shower like once a week, but you have your daughter come over or whatever to help you out with it, that's an activity of daily living, even though you're not taking a shower every day. The other thing that she had, she had suggested is if, you're, if your daughter is there to help you out because you're taking your shower and then getting out and getting dressed, right? Well, then actually that's two activities of daily living because you're taking your shower and you're getting dressed. Another great example is a lot of times at the assisted living facilities, there'll be some nights that are like steak night. But some people, just because of their arthritis or whatever, have trouble cutting their steak. So the assisted living facility has to cut their steak for them. Well, that's assistance with eating. Right? Um, all of which leads to the, the basic message, which is don't assume you know what the activities of daily living are. Understand that you ought to tell somebody your story. Maybe you want to tell Patty. Maybe you want to tell somebody else. But tell somebody the story who is dealing with the VA to see if your story does include a couple of activities of daily living. Right? Also remember, as she pointed out, that even if you don't need assistance with two activities of daily living, if you need assistance with one, then you still qualify for the veteran's benefit and the aid in attendance. That could be really significant if you're Frank and Mary, and you don't even yet want to go to assisted living, right? But you know you need some help at home. And you've talked to the, to the folks at, uh, at uh, Elder Services of the Cape and Islands, and they've said, yes, we can do this for you, but you only qualify for like six hours a month, right, or two hours a week, so very, very low services. So you're going to be needing to pay for some of these services out of pocket. Well, remember, those services that you're paying for, while for mass health purposes they're not considered to be medical expenses, for purposes of the VA benefit, they are. So think of $2,000 a month, divide by $20 an hour. How many hours of, assist, of assistance is that at home? Like 100 hours a month, right? It's a lot of hours a month that you can get through this benefit. Finally, remember, as Patty pointed out, that this benefit also gets paid to you or paid on your behalf to the nursing home if you're in the nursing home on private pay. It stops if you're on mass health. But what that means, if, for example, you're, Fr you're Frank and Mary and you're in Windermere, and you're at $12,000 a month, and Frank and Mary's income is only $3,500 a month, but you've transferred some assets out, you're trying to make it through a look-back period. Well, suddenly, the amount of, that you have to pay in private pay every month if you're a veteran has gone up from $3,500 a month to $5,500 a month because the you'd be eligible for the entire veteran's benefit. Right? So there are a lot of situations where this benefit could be really valuable to Frank and Mary, and they could be valuable to you. And once again, I'd say the, the, you know, the, the moral of the story is don't assume, right? Especially don't assume because your neighbor said, you know, or somebody said, oh, no, no, this really doesn't apply to you. Don't assume that. You really want to try to find out. Um, I, I thought that it was on there somewhere. That is our YouTube channel, as I had mentioned to you. Uh, if you decide that you would want to see any of the presentations we've done here or that I've done in other places, on really a variety of topics. Please check it out. And remember that that's the goal of life. The goal of life is to sleep well at night. So if any of this information is irrelevant to you or if you're not worried about it, you're not worried about it. Uh, if, if you are concerned about it and you think there's any way that you might qualify for this, ben this benefit, you ought to check it out. Because as Patty said, even if today being at home on your current income, you only, apply, you only uh, qualify for a small amount once you're in the system, it's going to be a lot easier later on if you decide to go to assisted living or if your expenses increase for any number of reasons if you want an, an expanded veteran's benefit. Thank you very much. Any questions?